Yeah, my name is Joachim Schulze. I'm a professor for systems medicine here at the DCNE. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, working at the University of Bonn with students. And here at the DCNE, my job is to get systems medicine, so the modern way of doing uh, medicine, into the institute and doing research in this area. So um, when you think about the future of medicine, you have many, many more data than we had ever before. So we're, we're basically capturing uh, images from patients, ultrasounds, laboratory method measurements, uh, genomic data. So what we call big data in medicine. And to really analyze this uh, in the future, you need machine learning or artificial intelligence. But we have a problem. Data privacy is extremely important in medicine. But on the other hand, when we do machine learning, we need a lot of data from many, many patients, probably across many institutions. Yeah, so that was the motivation. How can we technically solve this issue, keeping maximum data privacy and have access to a maximum of data? Current methods don't really cope with that. Swarm learning is a new concept in machine learning and artificial intelligence. We use the concepts of a swarm in nature where we have many, many individuals um, and they work all together. And translated this to machine learning, we have institutions, individual institutions that all have data and they will not share their data. They will protect the data locally where the data have, has been produced, but we can still work as a swarm and learn on the data together without sharing them. And that makes it completely different to other concepts that are currently out there for machine learning. So the purpose of our study was, can we use the technology that basically was developed by our partners at Hewlett Packard Enterprise with the ideas that we had in medicine, with the data that we have in medicine, bring it together and then show that it actually works in real life. Since we're coming from genomics, our idea was maybe we can use genomic data. They're very standardized and they have a lot of parameters that we can use for the artificial intelligence. We had already done something like that before for leukemias, where we used a patient's blood and analyzed what we call the transcriptome of the blood. This is all messenger RNAs that are existing in the blood as a space of parameters that we can measure in blood and we had thousands of them already in hand. So we can basically see whether we can use swarm learning to better understand whether there is a patient with a leukemia or not. So we used swarm learning and basically uh, simulated as if we would have different institutions where there were people treated with leukemia. And we asked, can we learn from their blood, from their parameters of the blood, the transcriptome, whether we have a patient with an acute leukemia or not? And swarm learning was much better than if each smaller institution would have learned only on itself. So the swarm was much more powerful and basically had better results. And then we were encouraged, of course, if that works, could we identify other diseases? And uh, during COVID-19, during the pandemic, it was, of course, and the question, can we actually also identify patients by this kind of swarm learning so that we could recognize them even earlier? And so we teamed up with hospitals in Europe and asked whether we could identify the patients with COVID-19. And again, the answer was, it was amazingly positive. Yeah, so we could really identify almost with no um, error the patients that were COVID-19 versus those that, for example, had other infections. So having seen that this works, you know, we actually did another test. So in, not in Europe, but in many other places in the world, tuberculosis plays an important role. It's also a disease that uh, gets uh, more dangerous again. And so we asked again, can we identify patients that have tuberculosis, although they don't know? We call that in medicine latent tuberculosis. And we knew from previous work that they have also changes in blood. So it, there might be a blood test. And so we applied swarm learning again and again we could identify even those patients that have this latent phase of TB, which has almost no symptoms, but they can infect others. So we continued and said, okay, can we actually identify from radiograms from the lung different changes, yeah? a tumor or a pneumonia, 
or uh, any other um, things that are known to be seen in such uh, uh, radiograms. Here we, uh, we use data that is available for testing. So about 100,000 of them are basically uh, available and we applied swarm learning the principle to this and we could show that we have better results than again if you would have smaller institutions with smaller data. So conceptually for us we have now enough evidence from different disciplines in medicine that we can apply swarm learning, protect data privacy, at the same time can make use of data, as many data points that are out there, and therefore we think this is a change, a conceptual change, how we will apply machine learning in medicine in the future.